something that is clearly true in this industry, the electric vehicle industry, and the growth that we've seen so far is that federal government incentives, initiatives, and funding is essential to its growth. Some think, hey, if this is a free market, it should be able to support itself, right? Charging infrastructure should just be able to be successful on its own. That's what would make a good charging infrastructure. But when we're really talking about catalyzing the transition to a greener, more electric transportation system, it is pretty essential that we do it very quickly, which means that we may not have the time to wait for the perfect business models to come into place and realize themselves because it takes a bit of time to break even on these sites and energy is expensive as well as the construction hardware operations that go into constructing a big EV infrastructure that we need. The first monumental initiatives have come in more recent history in terms of building out the EV infrastructure, of course, and we are able to see how exactly federal plans are going to catalyze this expansion of the EV infrastructure in real time all across the U.S., one by one or all at once. That's what we're diving into today. Where does NEVI progress stand today and how far along are we? Which states are taking the lead? Welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and today we're talking about federal money for state initiatives. To provide some context, the U.S. government has been actively pushing for cleaner, more sustainable transportation future. The adoption of electric vehicles obviously plays a pivotal role in achieving this goal with a le less greenhouse gas emissions from light, medium, and heavy-duty vehicles on the road. We are going to see a big reduction in the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere, and then hopefully all the wonderful benefits of that, bringing down climate, bringing down air pollution, and improving life overall. As part of this vision to go greener to create an electric transportation system that works in the U.S., the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program was established, also lovingly referred to as NEVI. The NEVI program is a federal initiative designed to support the development and expansion of electric vehicle charging infrastructure across the nation. Now, this is pretty unique to the U.S., so it'll be interesting to see how other countries are able to roll out similar initiatives to learn from the U.S. government and how this all rolls out and then enact their own plans as the EV market and industry in their country evolves. NEVI is administered by the Federal Highway Administration and is supported by the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation, also referred to as the Joint Office, as you'll hear and read many times, I'm sure, if you're diving into this information. So that's investing five billion U.S. dollars to deploy fast charging along more than 79,000 miles of designated alternative fuel corridors. So this is really important because it is really significant to have chargers where people live, work, and play. So if you can't charge at home, at least you can charge at the grocery store or when you're at the park or when you're in the library. That is very important. And it's the most typical use cases of driving and charging an EV if you're not driving, I mean, if you're not charging it in your garage. But of course, with range anxiety, there's a lot of pressure to fill up the corridors with EV charging, which is great. I mean, as someone who loves road trips, I'm going to want to see more and more of this on the road. But there is also an inflated fear that you can't get from New York to L.A. in an EV. But as we've proven again and again on the Out of Spec podcast, you can do road trips. You might have to have a bit of a go-getter attitude to plan it and make sure that you have the right range, the right route for you. But it's possible. And I can see it as, you know, an adventure, a fun technical process to go through. And hopefully the software and the EVs is getting better and better to help you navigate that on your own from charger to charger. But then I also get the other side of things where you're like, hey, I just need to get to grandma's house or need to get to go see a friend or go to an event in another place. And I don't want to worry about charging like I don't have to worry about finding a truck stop along the highway. So what does it take to secure NEVI funding? Well, the program typically provides funding to states and organizations that meet certain criteria. And this criteria includes what you would expect, demonstrated commitment where states need to demonstrate a strong commitment to promoting electric vehicle adoption and a sustainable transportation ecosystem, comprehensive plans wherein qualifying entities are often required to present well thought out comprehensive plans for expanding their electric vehicle charging infrastructure, which kind of goes into this next point of public and private partnerships. Collaboration with private sector partners is often encouraged to ensure the successful implementation and sustainability of charging networks. As states were creating their plans for NEVI, a lot of them had never had this kind of experience. They had their own ideas of what they would need at Every charging station, for instance, um, some states were saying that, hey, it's going to be imperative that charging stations uh, funded by NEVI will be able to be pulled through. 
But a lot of the time, it's harder for charging stations for the designs to be pulled through. While I see, of course, it's amazing to have a trailer behind your EV and just be able to pull through the the charging, the charger stop, it's not always possible. So to have charge point operators come and kind of intervene or rather inform states as these made the, as they made these plans was definitely significant and hopefully has led to better and better plans being iterated on before they were proposed and approved by the federal government. So let's discuss why NEVI funding is so significant. Electric vehicle charging infrastructure is obviously, we all know, a critical component of the transition to electric mobility. It addresses several key challenges, one of which I've already referenced earlier, range anxiety. There's widespread charging infrastructure that will reduce concerns about running out of battery power while driving, which will make EVs in general a more attractive option for consumers. Of course, also market growth. By investing in NEVI, states can, or by using NEVI, states can stimulate growth of the electric vehicle market, attracting automakers and creating jobs in the clean energy sector. This is a huge plus. And of course, emissions reduction. Electric vehicles are, of course, as we know, inherently more cleaner than their gasoline or diesel counterparts throughout the lifetime of their use. Promoting EV adoption through NEVI funding contributes to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and combating climate change. This is the big motivation behind NEVI. So where do states stand today? We heard about NEVI when it was launched. States had to put in their plans. What about now? How are things moving along? So according to the Joint Energy the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation, which you can know, easily online, there has been an update. So $1.5 billion has been, actually, I'm going to go to this slide. $1.5 billion of funding has been allocated for fiscal year 2022 and fiscal year 2023, which is great. We see $885 million already allocated for funding in fiscal year 2024. And then we have 75,820 miles of EV charging corridors designated as of July of 2022. A reminder that the goal for NEVI was 79,000. So we're pretty close. This means there's a little bit of leeway room if states, you know, need to push it up or take it back or switch and have a bit more conditions involved in their plans. But it is obviously moving along. They have a lot of approved plans. So on this page, which I will link in the description, it shows the state funding for fiscal year 2021 or 2022, 2023, and 2024 for each state. You can actually go through here, find any state that you're interested in, see the funding that they got, see the amount of my, or the number of miles they have dedicated to EV charging corridors and see their EV plan and the approval letter itself. So this is pretty in depth and you can really dive in. So it also shows that each state is pending or they're, they're ready to have these miles dedicated to NEVI through the round six of the Alternative Fuel Corridors Program. And if you don't know the Alternative Fuel Corridors Program, here's a bit of background because I didn't know that much about it. So in accordance with 23 USC 151, the Federal Highway Administration has designated alternative fuel corridors to support installation of EV charging, hydrogen, propane, and natural gas fueling infrastructure at strategic locations among major national highways. So there has been this federal initiative to identify exactly which of these corridors might be the right ones to be dedicating to this kind of initiative. So as written on their website, this support is this supports needed changes in the transportation sector that assists in reducing the GHG gases, the greenhouse gases emissions, and improves the mobility of passenger and commercial vehicles that employ these technologies across the United States. The FHWA, the as I said, the Federal Highway Association has updated and redesignated the corridors on an annual basis by soliciting nominations from state and local officials. So there's a lot of input coming in. Not only is there federal guidance and also public and private guidance that states can use, but it really just seems like there's a collaborative effort so states aren't really left alone in developing their NEVI plans, which I think is really essential here. So each state has had their own plan, their own plan approved at their, this point, which is what I said, and you can find their plans and approval letters, the funding for each fiscal year and their miles dedicated here. So on October 18th of 2023, Ohio was actually the first state to make and break ground on their NEVI infrastructure. So you can find it here. I'll, I'll cite this as well. But I think just west of Columbus, Ohio, 
they were able to really make the move. So that is pretty exciting. Ohio is technically in the lead. And there's also something that I wanted to mention too about these conditional Nevi awards, which I won't go too deep in, the, in this episode, but a conditional award in this context of the Nevi program is that any government initiative really typically has a commitment or promise by the government to provide funding or support on a project or to an organization under those specific conditions. And these conditions are put in place to ensure that the recipient of the award meets certain criteria or achieves predetermined milestones. So there have been seven states that have issued public conditional NEVI awards for NEVI stations amounting to 101.5 million. This includes Hawaii, Ohio, Maine, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Alaska, and Kentucky. And you can read more about these details and these plans um, at the link below again. So overall states are moving on with their NEVI funding. Building the plans was the first step, soliciting and receiving support from organizations like the Joint Office and public entities, some even from CPO providers themselves who helped shape, shape state state's plans was really important because one thing of note is that these projects are unlike anything that any of our states have done. It's new technology, a new industry, and a new way of travel. So collecting information and making these plans the most sustainable, and I mean long-lasting when I say that, is key to being a successful initiative in this country that lasts as long as we need it to and becomes the infrastructure that we need to promote EVs on the road. So that's a brief update of where things are in terms of NEVI. Let me know what you think about any of the NEVI movement made in your state or how you you think the structure of what the U.S. is doing could be applied on, on a different scale in a different country and maybe how it could just not work in your country as well if you're not in the U.S. Thanks for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast. If you enjoyed it, of course, let us know. Give us a like, comment, subscribe, and contribute to the conversation. I will see you next time on the Out of Spec podcast.